we found is uh, all across the country that uh, uh, not only departments of philosophy, which have traditionally taught courses in ethics, but uh, many other areas in, in the academic world have developed strong interest in ethics and have tried to introduce ethical considerations into the classroom. Mm -hmm. It's spilled over. It's not just a, a concern of philosophers any longer. It's a, Not at all. In fact, we have an expression or a term now which is uh, called ethicist. And the ethicist includes philosophers who have uh, long been interested in, in ethics. It includes people with uh, background in religion and uh, people like yourself in sociology who have special interests in ethics. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not the province of any one discipline, which I think is, uh, is a, healthy, a healthy thing. Mm -hmm. And one expression of this concern on our campus has been the formation of the Center for the Study of Ethics and Society, which is, right. is an interdisciplinary uh, center. I'm thinking back now, however, to uh, the very first time we met to talk about the possibility of creating an ethics center. We were in the student center. It wasn't even called the Bernhardt Center yet then. Uh, JT had just retired. And if you remember, as we were sitting around talking about the possibility of creating a center for the study of ethics and society, the new president popped in. Dieter Hanneke stopped by. And uh, <clears throat> as you know, he was a very strong supporter of the Ethics Center over the years. And finally it came to a head when I received a phone call from Vivian Weil at the Chicago Institute uh, of Technology. The, actually, it's the Illinois Institute of Technology. And she said that someone on my campus was doing some work on whistleblowing for her. And uh, she recommended to him that he contact me and talk with me because she knew that I was interested in whistleblowing. Uh, Vivian was a, a philosopher. Jim Peterson, the person at Western, was in sociology. So the odd thing was that through Chicago, one of my colleagues who was residing maybe 300 yards away from my office, uh, found out about me and that we had some mutual interests. I thought there, there has to be a more efficient way of uh, colleagues from different areas finding out about one another's complementary work. So uh, Jim Jackson and Shirley Bach and I uh, started talking about, well, maybe we should have a center. And uh, in the summer, late summer of 1985, uh, we just put out a calling to faculty that we knew of, that we had learned about one way or another, that we thought had interest in ethics. We sent out 20 invitations to come to a, a workshop, a three-day workshop in August when people are on vacation. To, uh, let's get together and talk about our mutual interest in, in ethics. This also coincided with the arrival of Dieter Hennecke as our new president. and. Uh, Anyway, 19 of the 20 people invited showed up for three days, and Dieter Hennecke was walking around the campus, went into the student center, saw us, wondered what were we doing there at this time, and we told him briefly, and he got quite excited and thought this was a really good idea. So out of that meeting, uh, we said, we want to have a center. And uh, of course then, we have to have a home, and we have to have some money. And uh, Mike Moscovis was uh, associate vice provost, uh, and he said, well, you could have $3,000. Would that help? And we thought, wow, that sounds like a lot of money. Uh, and he said, uh, of course, nothing interdisciplinary ever works around here. So Jim Jacks, uh, Shirley Bach, and I uh, knocked on Laurel's door and said we uh, had a little bit of money to start an ethics center but we needed a home since she was an advocate of our paying attention wherever we were in the university to ethical issues uh, maybe she would like to be the home for the ethics center. The graduate college reached across almost all departments in the university so we thought that would be uh, a way of avoiding having the Ethics Center get stereotyped as the, the branch of some specific discipline. So she said yes, and over the next uh, roughly eight years, uh, she was an advocate for the 
the Ethics Center, uh, especially in terms of our developing a stable budget, which never got very large, but it was more predictable than every year having to try to raise some money so that we could have programs for the uh, the following year. Um, we also talked with uh, Dieter Hanneke uh, shortly after that and said uh, we thought it would be good to have a little publication series that would be distributed uh, locally and in the community. And and he said, uh, well, he, he'd be willing to give us $5,000 one-time money. Uh, apparently he forgot it was only once because we got it again the next year and the next year. And it became a permanent part of our budget for which we're very grateful. This is how we, how we started and we decided to bring people to campus who could talk about topics of interest that were fairly broad uh, that related to ethical concerns. The name of our society, uh, the study of ethics uh, in society, uh, was meant to emphasize that, that we were very interested in practical, practical concerns that uh, would be uh, recognizable beyond the boundaries of any particular discipline. So we, we tried to pick issues that we thought would have that general interest. So the Ethics Center believes really strongly that ethics is for everyone, so we really try to engage people where they are, whether that be a Star Wars contest online or uh, staging a play that raises ethical issues, or we have film series, lots of different ways to engage the, the public and our campus community in discussions about ethics. One of the things the Ethics Center has been involved with for quite a while is the Intercollegiate Ethics Bowl competition for undergraduates. The competition started at the Illinois Institute of Technology in 1994. There were a handful of schools, and Western happened to win that competition. And in 1997, it went national. That is the year that I started coaching the team. Now there are regional qualifiers every fall, and more than 100 schools from around the country participate. So it's quite a competitive event. Um, we have been lucky enough to win the regional qualifier twice and we've also made it into the top 10 nationally three times. So this is something we're quite proud of and it's a wonderful experience for our students. There's been a lot of collaboration both in terms of the content of, of what we do and also in terms of the, the financial resources that we've had to draw upon to make it to make it work. The other thing I want to say about the Ethics Center is that it's been a joy to participate and it's one of the few occasions when we can pull people together from across the campus to engage with each other, to talk with each other. So often we end up being isolated in our own silos and we don't come out and meet people, even in our own department. So participating with the Ethics Center has been, has been a wonderful experience because of getting to meet so many different people across campus.